Seven states are now investigating monkeypox infections. Florida, California, Massachusetts, New York, Utah, Virginia, and Washington have all reported cases. Internationally, scientists have recorded more than 350 cases since May 5th. Now, most are in Europe. Well, joining me now is Dr. Shalika Katugaha, the medical director of infectious diseases at Baptist Health. And first off, thank you for being here. I know there's a lot of questions and concerns about monkeypox. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So uh, let's just start with how does monkeypox even form? Okay, sure. Uh, let me start with what monkeypox is. Monkeypox is a rare disease and it started in 1958 in monkeys, so hence the name. And we first saw the case, a case in a human in 1970. So um, monkeypox has a characteristic syndrome. We'll talk about it in just a moment, but usually it stays limited to endemic countries, which is Central and uh, West Africa. And if you get it internationally, it's because you've traveled or you've had exposure to other travelers or to animals who have had the disease process. So what we're seeing now is this international spread, which is highly unusual. And these numbers over 300, they're very high for us. So that's a concern. So that's why we're seeing it in the news. Also typically, what I, like what I said, you have it because of exposure to other travelers or to animals. This is the first time we're really seeing this community spread. And then the presentation this time has been a little bit atypical, which we'll get to, which makes this unique. Okay, so what are some of the signs of monkeypox? Sure. So monkeypox has what we call a prodrome, which is flu-like symptoms. So it starts with fevers and headaches and you know, flu-like symptoms, chills, backaches, and then it goes on in one or three days to form a characteristic rash. The rash is typically all over the body. It's round, firm. It can go through several stages, so you can get pus in it before it scabs and falls off. It can look something like what we call umbilicated, which means it has a little navel inside of it. So it's this rash and people stay infectious from the time they have that prodrome to the time the scabs fall off and the skin is clear. So what we're seeing in these cases actually is that the prodrome is small so some, and mild, so sometimes people don't even know that they have it. And then while the rash is characteristic, it's starting in the genital and perianal areas. And so people are presenting to their primary clinics, outpatient clinics, and to sexually transmitted dis disease infection clinics with this, you know, with these rashes, which are getting confused for sexually transmitted infections. Wow, so let's talk about uh, vaccines. Um, are there, is there any vaccines readily available or will soon be readily available? So th there is, there is a national stockpile through the CDC. And so they, these would be the same type of vaccines that are were prepared for smallpox because smallpox and monkeypox are cousins. And so there are two available for if you had a close exposure to someone before or even after. Um, there are also targeted therapies. There are some antiviral therapy and an immune globulin therapy. So let me just say most cases are mild and get better because of supportive therapy, but we certainly have these options out there. And outside of uh, getting vaccinated, what are some other uh, things that people can do to stay safe? Sure. So um, avoiding contacts with people who might have been exposed or who are sick. If you're a healthcare worker, you should wear proper protective equipment when you're around these suspected cases. If you're just going and you suspect someone may be sick, you could still mask up. You should, we tell everyone always, wash your hands. Um, you should avoid exposure to animals who could be sick. And um, the meat that you eat should be thoroughly cooked. And then now, because of the unique situation here, you should, if you have a new sexual partner, practice safe sex practices and stay vigilant. Wow, that is, it's just insane to even, you know, think about, but thank you so much for this insightful information. I know a lot of people have concerns about this. So thank you again, Dr. Katugaha, for joining us and sharing what we need to know to stay safe and healthy. Of course.